Hello, today we will be looking at displays. As you can see, I've got a few Chromebooks here with different displays. Personally speaking, a display is really important because you'll be using your Chromebook for a good few years. The last thing you want is a display that you're not happy with. Now, the display that you get obviously depends on what you're really after. Some people are after a budget laptop and a display comes second. Other people are after a more high spec laptop and because the display is really important. But you don't necessarily need to spend a lot of money for a good display. It all depends. It's just about looking, knowing what to look for. So in this video, I'm going to go through the whole range of Chromebooks and what sort of display you would expect to get and what sort of display you would get if you get a certain display panel, for example, over a different display panel. I hope you like the video. If you do, please like and subscribe to the channel below. So let's get started. So the first one we're going to be looking at is the Acer 311 Chromebook. This Chromebook is a budget Chromebook. I got this for £169. It's around $169 as well, so it's really cheap. I use this because it has got um, the military grade standards, so it can be thrown about and still work. And it actually, I do feel like that could be the case. But one thing I would say is, the display isn't necessarily fantastic. You might not necessarily be able to tell there, but it's okay. It depends, like I said, it depends on what you want and how much money you want to spend. So first of all, this is an 11.6 inch Chromebook. So with an 11.6 inch Chromebook, I wouldn't expect to get a full HD display because you just won't get one, not unless you're spending a hell of a lot of money on a Chromebook. So if you're going for a Chromebook with an 11.6 inch display, don't expect full HD. It will come with standard HD, standard definition, which is 1366 by 768. And that's fine because that sort of resolution on this size of display isn't anything to be concerned about at all. Don't get me wrong, you can get Chromebooks, like for example, the Asus C302, which wasn't a budget Chromebook. It's a few years old now. That had a 12 and a half inch display and that did have full HD. So that's really good. But when you're looking at a budget Chromebook, you're not gonna get one at this display size with full HD, it'll be standard definition. Comparing that, to, for example, to, let me just check here. Now this is also a budget Chromebook and it's really old because when I turned it on today, it said that it's got its last update and this is the Toshiba Chromebook. It's a budget Chromebook, but I love Toshiba. It's shown they don't make lap, uh, Chromebooks anymore because they have fantastic displays. Now that's a budget Chromebook, but look how good that display is. So it is a really good display. This is a 14 inch display. So with 14 inch, I, you, may, you do get Chromebooks with a 14 inch display with standard definition of 1366 by 768. I would steer clear from them. The only reason I would buy, possibly buy one with 14 inch with standard definition is if you, your, your eyesight's not great and you like bigger text and bigger images, then maybe it might be suitable for you. But personally speaking, I wouldn't touch a 14 inch laptop without full HD. I just don't think it's, it's necessary. And they shouldn't be necessarily over expensive as well, because it's, it's not expensive to put full HD on a 14 inch panel compared to an 11.6 inch panel you get on the Acer. These are both budget Chromebooks, but you'll notice the difference, not just in the actual display size, but you'll notice this, and this is old by the way, like I says, the AUE date has expired on this. This is new, this has still got AUE date until 2028. Something else you may have realized is, and they're both the same Im image by the way, but you can see, you can go like that with this, and you can still see the display, unless it goes into the reflection of the window. With this one, you can see the display like that, but when you start turning it around, you can't. And you can see that. Now the reason for that, which is I've mentioned many times before on my blog and on the channel, is because this has got an IPS panel and this has a TN panel. And that's something else you need to consider as well. So don't get me wrong, it still works, but it's something there you'd have to have it in front of you like that. If you've got it down like that, it will start to deteriorate the image quality and to the left and to the right, it will start to deteriorate as well. But with an IPS panel, you just don't get that. But also one thing you'll notice, it's not just that, look how vivid the colors are 
on the IPS panel compared to that one. So you do get more true to life looking images. It just makes it look so much nicer. That being said, let's just go back to a budget 11.6 inch Chromebook. Like I says, it's what you pay for. And if you're looking at a Chromebook for about, I would say anything under $230, $230 pounds, it's unlikely you're going to get an IPS panel. So that's something just to bear in mind. It's usable, but it's not fantastic. It's, it, it, it really does depend on what you want. So if you're going for a budget 11.6 inch Chromebook, if you can get an IPS panel, great, but expect that it's more than likely going to be a TM panel. Also, don't expect full HD. You wouldn't expect it at this price. And like I said, this, this size, not having full HD is absolutely fine. So that's what I'd expect to see. There's no touch screen on this either, which isn't great, but again, at the price, that's exactly what you're gonna get. Okay, so now if we go on to the Toshiba, because this is so old, this doesn't have a touch screen because Chromebooks didn't have touch screen back then because you didn't have Android back then. And this is a really good example of a budget Chromebook done good because that panel is fantastic. And the reason why that is fantastic isn't just that it's got an IPS panel, it's also that different manufacturers who use different panels and some are better than others. But rule of thumb, if it has got IPS, it's gonna be pretty decent. It's just the fact that with Toshiba, they are very good displays. 14 inch, so you'd expect full HD, and that's how it looks. The difference you can see quite a lot. Now, if we compare that to, for example, it's just turned off. This is the Acer 713 Chromebook. The image, obviously the Acer 713 has got a better display, without question, and you, you can sort of see that there, but it's not too much difference. They've both got IPS, like it says, so they're both good at an angle, but there is a difference between these two. This one has 3.2 aspect ratio, the Acer 713, and the Toshiba has a 16.9 aspect ratio. Now, a lot of budget Chromebooks, or even medium spec Chromebooks, come with a 16.9 aspect ratio. That's absolutely fine, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. What it means is it's more suitable for HD movies because most of them are in 16.9. So when you play, play a movie, it would be fine. And when you play games, you'll get the full display as well. The difference is a lot of websites, when you go onto websites, you'll see that most of the information is in the middle here and you've just got a white space here and you've got a white space here. So it's a waste of space in that, in that regards. And that's what you don't get with a 3.2 aspect ratio. With a 3.2 aspect ratio, it's slimmer, but it's taller. So you do see more on the display. The only thing I would say, this is off being uh, talking about the displays, is 3.2 can make them a bit bigger, taller. So I'm not necessarily, and this is why I, I, I don't think I would keep my Acer 713 for traveling. If you're on a tight train, for example, or a plane, and there's not much room in front of you, because you've got the taller display, it's going to hit against the chair in front of you. So you can be in a situation when your display is like that, and it can make it quite awkward to actually work with. So that's the only thing I'd consider if you're thinking about a 3.2 aspect ratio. But that being said, it also depends on the display size as well. This is 13.3 inches, I believe. If that's wrong, I'll put some text on the video to let you know, but I'm sure it's 13.3 and you've got that. But then if we compare that to the Pixel Slate, let me just get my Pixel Slate. I've got it attached to a bridge keyboard. Let's turn this on, sorry. So with the Pixel Slate, if it turns on, it is on, put my fingerprint on, there we go. With a Pixel Slate, this is a 3.2 aspect ratio as well, the same as the Acer 713. The difference is it is a smaller display. Again, I think it's 12.3. I will leave a note up there if that's incorrect. Um, this is a molecular display, so it's IPS, but it's also using Google's own technology here 
or they've outsourced it for someone to give them a fantastic display. And again, without question, this is going to have the best display out of all of these four I've just shown you, but it's not far off the quality of the Acer 713. It's, it's better, it's brighter, and it's crisper. Now, if we go back to the Acer 713 for a second, we was talking about resolution. So most 14 inches are the 1920 by 1080. This actually has more than 1080p resolution. And that really works with the Acer 713 because it's taller. It's 13.3, so it's a compact display, but because it's taller, that extra resolution really works and it works really well. So if I'm on websites, for example, I'll just go on to here and just type in anything, it doesn't really matter. And let's just go on to news website you can just go into cnn.com you can see i can read that text and that's perfectly fine there's no problem with reading that text and that's one thing you need to consider when you're going for a really high resolution is whether you're going to be able to read the text now of course if the text is too small you can just hold control shift and press the plus key and that will increase it and as you can see the text gets bigger and you can press a minus key so the text gets smaller as well down to the native resolution. So that is something to consider. And the reason why I say that is this is perfectly fine, but when you get onto the Pixel Slate, although it's fantastic because this has got 3000 by 2000 resolution, so it's got a super sharp image, amazing. It's a, it's a fantastic device, no question about it. However, if you go onto the same website, CNN, because the resolution is so, look, look, at the, look how much data you're getting on there. If you compare the screens, you're getting so much more on there. So although the 3000 by 2000 resolution is good and it's nice, it's not very practical. That, although I can still read that, it's not as comfortable as reading it on the Acer 713 because this resolution perhaps is a bit too high. It's great in tablet mode when you've got it in tablet mode, but on standard, again, if I was using this for a long time, I would end up having to increase the resolution. And then you've got to argue if you're doing that, why go for such a high resolution in the first place? So that's something to be uh, cons um, to think about. Also, as I says, this is 3.2 to 713 is 3.2. They're great because you get more text, but it does mean when you're watching movies or you're playing HP full HD games, you will get a little black bar at the top and at the bottom. So that's something to consider. And both the Pixel Slate and the Acer 713 has a touchscreen, which is really good because it means you can do that when you're on a website, but more importantly for Android apps, it's really good as well. So that's something you would have to think about when buying a Chromebook and thinking about the display. And this is a hybrid as well. So you can put it in temp mode or you can put it in tablet mode. Again, something to consider which with the Toshiba and the Acer, they're just laptops, so you can't do that. And with the Pixel Slate, that's a two-in-one, so you can detach the keyboard and use it as a tablet. Better than using this as a tablet, okay, although it's okay, it's, it's not gonna be just an actual tablet as such. So when you're considering buying a Chromebook, it does depend on how much you're spending and the display size as well. If you're buying a budget Chromebook with an 11.6 inch display, you're most likely not gonna get an IPS panel. You need to consider whether you're okay with that or not, and you will just get standard definition. If you're buying a 14 inch budget Chromebook, then you shouldn't really be getting standard definition. That should still come with full HD. And ideally you want it to have an IPS panel as well on a 14 inch Chromebook. But again, you will get some of a TM panel. They're okay TM panels, but, but realistically, if it's a, it's a Chromebook you're gonna be using regularly, an IPS panel you're gonna get more satisfaction from. If you go more higher spec or medium range, then maybe look at something like a 3.2 aspect ratio rather than a 16.9, that's more suitable for you. You'd obviously want it to be touchscreen and you definitely want it to be IPS. 
and you definitely want it to be full HD resolution as an absolute minimum. I would be careful about going crazy with resolution. It's got to work right for the actual display. Like I says, with a Pixel Slate, it gets away with it because it's a tablet more than a Chromebook, so it looks perfect in that mode, it's fine. But with an actual laptop like the Asus F13, although you can use it still as a tablet, the resolution is done right with that. Asus has done it really good. But with 4K, for example, you get 4K laptops. Obviously, they're going to look fantastic. But when it comes to reading stuff on the website, on the internet, you're going to struggle reading off a display of that resolution. So you'd end up just increasing the resolution anyway. So just be careful what you're buying and don't overbuy and spend more than you need to. So I hope this video helped. If it did, please like below and subscribe to the channel for future videos. And thanks for watching.